Um, first of all, I want to thank you, the Fulbright Commission, for providing the funds for me to be here, and also uh, Professor Enrique Saburio, who is the Dean of the School of Visual Arts at the Finisterre University. Thank you for being here. He has been of great help uh, for me to be here. Uh, my presentation is very long, but I'm going to be browsing a lot. It's very visual. I'm a visual artist, right? And I'm breaking down the presentation into three segments. One, I'm going to be talking a little bit about drawing, which is my field of interest. I'm going to be talking about me as an artist, because what I'm going to be doing here with the students at the Finisterre University has to do with my own creative process. I'm going to be speaking about, about my role as a professor of art, and I'm going to end it up with my project. Um, uh, well, first of all, why being in Chile? Um, well, artists, we are always on survival mode. Uh, well, I don't have to worry about starving anymore because I'm a college professor. I'm always thinking about the next step, right? Um, uh, art is also about establishing connections, right? Uh, relating to people. And me coming from Spain, uh, being a US citizen as well, having spent almost 30 years of my life in the US, going back to Spain often, there was a time when it was time to start thinking about coming to Latin America because of the cultural connection that I have with this continent. But also because I felt that uh, perhaps uh, the ideas that shaped my art had something to do with, the, again, the culture of this place. Uh, I, I, I came to realize that every country is a different world. Uh, we all speak the same language with different accents, right? And uh, I come from Europe, and this is America, right? So anyway, I think it was, it was time for me to do it. I started with Mexico, then I went to Colombia, and now I'm coming back to Chile for the second time. Three years ago, I was a visiting artist at the Finisterre University. So that's how I established the connection. I had the opportunity of teaching a very short uh, one-week workshop. Uh, now it's going to become a semester-long uh, uh, course. So let me tell you a little bit about drawing. Okay, the presentation is English and Spanish, so I'm going to move to the English part, right? Um, artists are visual scientists who continually invite new technologies into the studio laboratories, right? Artists, we place, we like, we have like an awkward placement within academia, right? Uh, but yeah, we, we, we kind of function like scientists. Our laboratory is, is the studio, is the place where we research, is the, is the trips we do, abroad to uh, try to uh, pursue new ideas. Um, right, drawing. I think drawing is the most ancient and effective language, right? If none, us, uh, if none of us were able to speak any English or Spanish, or we were not able to communicate via words, we would be right now doing little drawings to try to explain each other who we are, uh, what, what are we are about, right? Uh, it doesn't matter the quality, if we draw well or bad, we are going to be able to Right? So this is the first drawing that I did when I was three years old. Right? Um, I think I was trying to tell my mother that I had a big headache because I just skipped the body. Right? Or maybe I was trying to tell my mother that I was a pretty intense, uh, bright guy. Right? I didn't know what I was trying to do. Uh, this was uh, 28 years later, after I graduated from college. Right? And this is kind of like a hybrid image. I'm not going to speak much in depth, but you're going to see the progression of my work when I was 20 years old, when I uh, graduated from college in Spain, up to now. OK, um, so um, I'm a visual artist. I'm a scholar and educator who uses drawing as means of artistic expression. And I, in my creative and teaching practice, I maintain a strong interest in advancing the discipline of contemporary drawing. Uh, looking for synergies between this medium and others, such as photography, printmaking, and painting. Um, I got a BFA um, degree in painting and art conservation in uh, Spain. I have spent a pretty uh, substantial part of my life working as an art conservator, uh, restoring art, old art, for museums and uh, uh, auction houses. I got my MFA in drawing at the School of Fine Arts in Madrid, where I'm from, and I got a second uh, degree from the University at Buffalo in painting, and I'm sorry to tell you, Mason, I'm not a doctor. Oh. Yeah. Okay. You have been calling me doctor over the last uh, six months, I'm not a doctor. Right? I'm in the process of writing now my dissertation, 
to finish my doctoral degree. As you may know, uh, to teach in academia, you don't need to be a doctor, you need to have a master's degree, right? In Europe, you need to have a doctoral degree, to, uh, you have to be a PhD, to be able to teach in the academic uh, world, not in uh, the US, right? So this is a, a degree that I left behind many years ago, and I decided to finish it now. Now that I think exactly what I want to be writing about, right? Anyway. Uh, so I'm from uh, Madrid, Spain. There is Madrid between Africa and Northern Europe. We are told to be part of Africa. We think we are part of Europe. We don't know exactly where we are, but we are there. I'm Spain, and I'm from Madrid, right there, right in the center. Um, I moved to the U.S. Um, when I was 25 years old. This is um, interesting. I applied for a Fulbright um, scholarship, the same one you have. I went through all the interviews. I didn't get it. I was very disappointed. Many years after, I'm here as a scholar. So life works in really unexpected ways, right? Anyway, I got a, I got a, um, um, a full scholarship from the University of Buffalo. So I have lived the last 29 years of my life in New York State, right? So I consider myself a child of the I-90 corridor, which is the highway that goes across a New York. So I lived for 10 years in New York City. Now I'm living in Syracuse, New York, but I teach in Oswego, which is that little town where the university is next to Lake Ontario, right? Okay. So these are my works. Um, this is my last painting when I was an undergraduate student. I was I, I consider myself the uh, byproduct of many frustrations. A frustrated painter, a frustrated cartoon artist, a frustrated photographer who happens to be drawing, right? So as you can see, not much color. I started. These are very large uh, uh, drawings. I call them drawings. I don't call them call them paintings. I did my own version of pop art when I moved to the US. That was my tribute to Ali Warhol in a very dark way. Um, this is the work that I was producing when I was a, a, a graduate student in Buffalo. This was my studio. I was doing these gigantic large scale drawings. Uh, so I come from a very traditional uh, program, um, very academic, but I always had an interest to explore uh, cross disciplinary uh, possibilities within the field of drawing. As these are some of the drawings that I started to do when I moved to New York City. I started to combine drawing with photography, always very much interested in the human figure, um, as well as in um, animals. Um, I had a strong interest in psychology and philosophy, uh, the social condition, uh, the existential nature, uh, the duality that we all carry within us, uh, the animal-human duality. So I kind of, uh, these images are metaphors to express uh, these ideas. And as you can see, they are hybrid images where there's a combination between uh, drawing, um, photography, and sometimes painting, a little bit of printmaking. I always thought, uh, coming from a very traditional academic 19th century type of training, I wanted to think about drawing, uh, as I mentioned before, in a much more contemporary way. So I always thought about how to bring drawing to a different level, right? So moving away, and again, these are very large, uh, large scale drawings. Uh, moving away from, um, moving away from uh, the traditional uh, small format, traditional medium, into a much more uh, um, experimental way of thinking about drawing. Um, this is a show that I did in Madrid, 2004. Um, I thought about drawing as an installation too, using these uh, drawings, not again like little uh, sketches, but becoming, draw uh, becoming images that are taking over on a space, uh, playing with environment, right? I have a strong interest uh, lately in on street art, and I wonder how I could bring my work onto the walls of some of the city buildings, something uh, right now in the making. So anyway, um, so as you can see, um, this is another installation that I did in a liquor factory, which is an art center nearby in Madrid. So I was thinking about how to combine the two-dimensionality of my drawings with a three-dimensional three -dimensional element. Right? So it's always trying to think outside the box. And back to the human figure. 
Okay, this is my working environment, and this is the working environment that my students have when I teach these uh, workshops. Um, well, the digital lab, which means a computer and a printer, right? Uh, this is the dark room where I work, where I produce the first stage of my work, and uh, I always work, the dark room is dark, so I work with a flashlight. This is a big piece of photo paper. I'm not going to go much in detail because I don't have time. And it's very much about talking about my project here. But anyway, this is the environment where I work. This is a piece of photo paper that I have already processed with chemicals and light. And then I go to my studio, and there is where I create these collages. And then I start working at, working at very low tech. Okay. By low tech, I mean when I decided to reinvent myself through drawing, I said I'm going to throw away traditional tools no brushes, no pencils, I'm going to work with my hands. I'm going to work with mediums that are completely foreign to drawing, such as etching ink. I'm going to draw literally with my hands using elliptic globes, using Q-tips, uh, spatulas. Um, so here you have an idea of the scale of the drawings. That's in one of the many residencies that I have done internationally. And this is my current studio in Syracuse, right? So. Now, um, my academic position, I'm a full professor. Uh, two years ago, I became a distinguished uh, SUNY. SUNY means the State University of New York, which is the largest uh, public system in the country. I'm a professor in art and on, in research. I'm also a visiting professor at the Universidad Rey Juan Carlos in Madrid, Spain. I'm the coordinator of the drawing area at the State University of New York. And also, um, this, I'm also the coordinator of the master's uh, studio program. And here I am, um, um, this is the beginning of a figure drawing class. I'm going to be lecturing on artistic anatomy. Right now what I'm doing is I'm drawing all the different muscles on the uh, body of the model to start my lecture for my students. Okay, uh, the title of my research project is Cross-Disciplinary Drawing Practices, the hybridization of drawing with photography, painting, and printmaking. Drawing of photographic emulsions, analog and digital. This is the title of my thesis, by the way. Um, anyway, so this is what I do, how I combine handmade drawings with a, a chemically processed a photo paper. And this is what the students are going to be doing. So, uh, let me see. And this is interesting. Drawing has become a very consolidated uh, medium, per se. Drawing was always the support for painting, for sculpture, for printmaking. Drawing was always thought as an aid. But in the 80s and the 90s, there is like a breakthrough. Suddenly, drawing becomes a field on its own. And, well, there are several reasons. I cannot go in there because I don't have time, but uh, there is the uh, uh, I would say the romantic reason why that happened and also the practical reason. The practical has to do with the art market, with uh, the capitalist uh, society we live about making money. But anyway, definitely drawing becomes a field on its own and uh, artists start thinking about drawing, not necessarily painting or making sculpture, just focusing on drawing. So this is something rather new. So this is a French artist, again, I'm not going to go in detail. These are samples of artists who are kind of like drawing in a very contemporary way uh, using a combination of different mediums. And this is, by the way, this is a painting now with powder, burnt powder. Meaning again, like when we think about drawing, we are not thinking just about pencils, we are thinking really big, right? Okay. Um, Now, the, uh, my project goals were uh, explore the bridging between traditional and non-traditional mediums and uh, technology, and experiment with new drawing processes combined with photo, uh, um, digital media, printmaking, and painting, and do a historical research on these concepts and ideas. So I'm going to show you a little bit what the students, uh, what's going to be happening in the workshop, right? This is something that I, I mean, again, this workshop I teach it international. I go to different places. This is a, this workshop was at the European University in Madrid for a month. Um, the students have already uh, played with the photo paper. They have either printed or created uh, different stains. 
now they are combining together all these different parts. Uh, now once they they are combined, they start drawing. They use they use some some of them use some photographic references to draw from. They try to create a kind of like a hybrid combination uh, between figuration and abstraction. So it's a lot of it's a, it's a lot about playing. Plain because um, it's a very unorthodox process, yeah? So you don't really have to have a, a traditional training to be able to do this, right? So there are the students are already working with the Q-tips, adding the pigment, the oils, or, or, uh, or uh, print making. Thing. And this is some of the results, some of the work the, stu the, the students produced. The idea is for the students to uh, seek, to search for their own personal means of expression. Uh, the idea is also to work in a collaborative way. And that's why I like to work with a, with a group. And to engage students in open and critical discussions and collaborate. Collaborate also with, uh, hopefully, with the students from other areas where we can have a panel discussion. I'm going to evaluate also the outcomes of uh, the drawings uh, and the way they work in a collaborative way. I'm going to analyze the strategies by which the students will pursue personal, conceptual, and technical ways of approaching creative images. And I'm going to be assessing the aspects of the work by employing group critics, having group discussions of the in-progress pro in work. This is um, on digital. This is a digital uh, process, uh, drawing and digital imaging. That's also on uh, digital, digital and, uh, and there is a difference between analog photography and digital photography. Right. So here the background is digital and it has been manipulated by hand uh, with pigments and with solvents. That's another digitally uh, generated uh, drawing. And okay, um, the methodology. Well, I'm not. I'm going to bypass this. I want to move towards the end. Uh, but it's very much uh, a reiteration of, of the things that I mentioned before. Um, this is very important. We are going to examine the work of contemporary artists who are really working within this uh, type of exploration because there is a real genre. There is a real uh, group of international artists who are really pushing forward with these uh, ways of doing. So um, we are going to be looking, not only we are going to be looking at uh, the work uh, produced by these artists, we are really going to be experimenting the same way they do, right? So we are going to do an analysis of um, the photographic, photographic emotion manipulation to create hybrid images, and these are some, these are very famous artists, they are really well known internationally, right? And I'm going to show you some, some samples of the work uh, they produce, right? So this is a Polaroid cream that has been manipulated before the pigment has dried, right? So suddenly turning a painting, uh, phot a photograph into something very pictorial, right? And uh, distorting the image. Uh, we, we need to think that the distortion is not happening per se. There is always an idea behind, right? There is a, a, a motivation to, to, like, for it to happen. Uh, this is Matthew Brand. He works with digital uh, um, digital uh, emulsion, and he is um, basically working with humidity and water over the emulsion and turning uh, a print into an abstract sort of painting. Um, this is very interesting. This is a French artist. He works he works with fungus. Uh, he places the fungus on the um, uh, emulsion. And then the fungus starts biting, eating away the motion, right? It starts procreating, growing, and that's creating the art piece, right? To what extent is he controlling the process of decay? It's up to him. Um, we are going to analyze the hybridization between painting, drawing, photography, and print making. And these are some of the artists we are going to be looking at and hopefully bringing some of their uh, methods into the work. Um, this is uh, an artist from uh, uh, from Nigeria, and she combines. Well, I'm not going to go into detail. It's kind of more of collage type of uh, images. Um, this is a very well-known German painter who combines photography with painting. Very straightforward. 
this is an Austrian artist, a, 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 paint, well, a painter, for painter, he's more of a painter than a photographer. Again, combining this gestural type of painting with photography, um, they are uh, portrait, self-portraits. That's what he does. This is an Spanish artist who does a combination also between painting and photography. So as you can see, some of the work is very much just um, very basic manipulation or mark making process over the surface, and some other works are much more complicated in the way that the photographic and the painting or drawing process takes place. Um, we are going to analyze uh, drawings, um, painting, pro drawing and painting processes using chemicals. Um, this is uh, drawing with light, okay? And here you see it. This is what happens when you go into the dark room. You start treating the photo paper with light and you start dropping the chemicals and you start playing around, you start creating this kind of like surreal landscapes. But this is what I usually do, and then I draw on top of this, right? I like the, the synergy between the two worlds. Uh, the same artist doing something very similar. Um, basically the same thing, working with light and with uh, chemicals to produce this kind of very graphic type of marks. So something even much more complex. The color here is not pigment, it's just the way the chemicals are biting through the, through the motion, and they are gener generating different colors, right? And we work with three different types of uh, chemicals. And we are going to be looking at uh, painting and drawing processes with light. Uh, so this is a, a British artist, I already I think showed you another piece by him, a color uh, print, print painting, photography, whatever. Um, the same thing, working with light in a much more pictorial way, surreal, right? More surreal type of imagery, more expressionistic, and that's again uh, manipulation of, of the emotion with light and generating this image. And this is a British artist, he doesn't really draw, but he creates. Um, uh, he creates these really uh, strange images that look very photographic. Basically what he does is he, he puts a piece of paper under water, then he puts objects, well, objects of human beings, over the water, and then he uh, lifts the surface and then gets that outcome. Right? Uh, I don't think we will be able to do this uh, uh, this time. Anyway. Also, um, yeah, I'm going to s tell my uh, the students that uh, because there is a, we are going to be really doing some research on the international art spaces that are really supporting uh, this type of art practice. Right? There are very there are very specific places internationally that are only focused into exhibiting uh, drawing, experimental drawing. And then, um, hopefully, um, my idea is to bring um, some of the student work that have, will be produced uh, to do an exhibition of that work at uh, SUNY Oswego at the Central Gallery. And um, who knows if this might be, become like a, some kind of art exchange program happening between the two uh, between the two universities. All right. Thank you for your attention.